Good morning. This is the first introduction to this podcast. When is the last time you refused to do something for a person in anger? When is the last time you did something for the hell of it? When is the last time you were in one hell of a hurry? When's the last time you were really surprised about something and could have said, fucking hell? When's the last time you were somewhere and all hell broke loose? When is the last time you could have said it is hot as hell outside? And what the heck does cold as hell mean? Does it mean it's hot or does it mean it's cold? What the hell if I know the answer to that? I actually do know the answer to that. Ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is all about hell. Let's get to it. Good morning and welcome to another semi-planned episode of Little Seal English. And this episode is all about the beautiful word hell. Now I posted a video about three different idioms or ways to use the word hell on my social media platforms. And uh, the aim of this podcast is literally just go through a couple of different phrases and different ways to use the word hell. So grab a pen and paper and uh, yeah, let's just get to it. The first one is a very common one. Now remember, it's slang. A lot of this is slang. A lot of this you wouldn't want to use in a work context or in a formal situation, especially the very first one, which is the hell I will. And if you say, the hell I will, you are basically saying, no, I will not. So get that straight. The hell I will means, no, I won't. But we use it in a very angry way. In a way where you're putting your foot down. In a way you're letting the person know, there's not a fucking chance I'm going to do that. And we would use it when we are very, very, very angry or very strongly against something. And it's kind of like, let's think of an example. Uh, You're at work, or you're not at work because we don't want to use this at work. You will probably get fired or depends on your relationship with your boss or your colleagues, I guess. But imagine you're with your family and, um, oh, I have a perfect example. You're playing football with your friends, like soccer. And someone kicks the ball over the wall. And there's a dog in the next garden. And your football is there and you want to get it. But obviously you're afraid because there's a dog. And so someone says, hey, Ronan, he'll get the ball. I'll turn and say, the hell I will. I'm not going in there. There's a fucking dog. So if you really don't want to do something, the hell I will. Used in anger, which means I won't. Now, number two, a very fun one. Um, We use this variation of the word hell or phrase of the word hell when we do something for no particular reason. We do something because it's fun, because it relieves boredom. And when you do something for no reason, and when you do something just because it's fun, and when you do something because you're bored, you do it for the hell of it. For the hell of it. So it's kind of like, hey, um, why are you guys driving down to the other side of the country? For the hell of it. We're bored. We got nothing else to do right now. Think about when you're just hanging out with your friends or something and you're all bored and there's nothing to do. And then someone says, do you want to just like go for a hike for the hell of it? Let's just go to the bar for the hell of it. We're bored. We have nothing else to do. Or if someone says, why did you do something? Ah, just for the hell of it. Why not? Maybe there's an unplanned decision and you decide to go on holidays for the hell of it. It's kind of like, I I have no reason not to do this. I have no reason to do it. I'm just doing it because I'm bored. I'm doing it for no particular reason because it's fun. I'm doing it for the hell of it. All right. So the first one, the hell I will. The second one, for the hell of it. The next one that we will talk about is one hell of a hurry. Very self-explanatory to be in a major hurry. 
So if you see a person who's running down the road and they look a little panicked, you can say, wow, that person is in one hell of a hurry. Or maybe you are in one hell of a hurry because you slept in, you didn't get up in time, your alarm didn't go off, and now, because of all that, you're in one hell of a hurry. You have to be on work on time. If you're late, you get fired. So he is, or she is, or they are in one hell of a hurry. The company are in one hell of a hurry to sell all the shares because they're going bankrupt. I don't know. So that is one hell of a hurry to be in a major hurry. The next one we're looking at is all hell break loose or all hell broke loose. If you're in a bar and everything is going nice and smooth and then suddenly out of nowhere two people start fighting and one person is thrown over a table and a glass is smashed and a chair is broken over someone's back. Well, holy shit, all hell broke loose. Sudden chaos happened. So when all hell breaks loose, something suddenly goes crazy. Suddenly there's a load of chaos in the area. Suddenly there is no control to the situation. I have the perfect example. It's Halloween right now. Well, it's November 1st. So Halloween was yesterday. Now in Ireland, we like to have fireworks for Halloween. One thing that we used to do in school, when I was in Summerhill College in Sligo, a unique, unique school, we would bring fireworks into school. And we would have these fireworks, and some people would let the firework off in the hallway, in the corridor, in the yard, for example. I'm not even joking. You would be walking down the hallway, going to class, and suddenly you look at your feet, and there's a lit firework, and you just have to run. There's nothing you can do. You might kick it away from you and run the other direction, but there's no stick on the firework, which means no one knows where it's going to go. It's unpredictable. So you can imagine in a school with 800 boys, and let's say it's in the hallway in between classes. So there's a couple of hundred boys in the hallways, and suddenly someone just chucks a firework that's lit. All hell breaks loose. Everyone runs. Everyone panics. One person will usually shout, Sketch. S-K-E-T-C-H. Sketch. And that just means run now. Scatter. Get out of here. So in my school, at Halloween, all hell would break loose when someone lit a firework in the hallways. But the best example... We were in class one time. I think it might have been geography or math. And some boys knock on the door. And the teacher goes over to open the door. And the teacher is fairly old. And as the teacher opens the door, two boys are there with a lit firework and they toss it into the classroom and they run. And the teacher turns, looks at all of us, steps out the door and locks the door. So all of a sudden, there's like 25 boys in a classroom and a lit firework on the ground. And we all know it's going to go off. Well, let me tell you, all hell broke loose in that classroom. Everyone was panicking. Everyone was jumping around and screaming. And like, as soon as the fireworks started to go off, we just had to jump and dive to the ground and just hope we wouldn't get hit by it or something. But at that moment, all hell broke loose. Can you imagine the chaos that would be there if you were locked in a room with a lit firework and 25 people? Everyone would panic. All hell would break loose. Ah, oh, one of my favorite ones. So there's some good expressions. We'll do one or two more. Uh, we're running on eight minutes now, so keeping up a good time. And the next phrase, or the next usage of the word hell, is actually a grammar structure, and it's adjective as hell. Adjective as hell. Hot as hell. Cold as hell. Expensive as hell. Sexy as hell. Angry as hell. And that is a way to make the adjective stronger. If you say it is hot as hell out there, it is extremely hot. If you say it's cold as hell out there, guess what? It means very, very cold. It's a little bit strange. Hot as hell, cold as hell. Yes, 
we are aware that hell is not cold. However, we just use as hell to make the adjective stronger. Cold as hell. Expensive as hell. That car was expensive as hell. Gas is expensive as hell right now. Going to school is expensive as hell. Screw it. Life in general is expensive as hell, especially these days. So we generally use it in those types of sentences I just gave you. I can't really think of any other rules, but adjective as hell it just makes the adjective stronger. All right. Um, what do you say if you don't know something? What do you say if you don't have the answer to something? What do you say if you don't have the answer to something and you are frankly quite surprised someone thought that you did? You're thinking, why the heck are you asking me this question? Like, I'm just a low-level worker in this company. Do you really think I'd have that answer? What can you say in that situation, in an informal way? What I would say is, hell if I know. Hell if I know. Another beautiful construction with hell. And it just means I don't know. It really just means... I have zero idea and there's no point in even asking me this question. Just imagine you are a cashier in a store and someone comes up and they start complaining to you. You're a cashier. You're being paid minimum wage. You don't know anything about this company. Frankly, you don't even care about this company. And so someone says, why is this happening? Where is blah, 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 blah. You can just turn around and say, hell if I know, I just started. Hell if I know, I'm a fucking cashier. Ask someone else. Hell if I know, I haven't spoken to that person in ages. So hell if I know, I don't know. And you can use a noun phrase after it. After it. Hell if I know why. Hell if I know where. Hell if I know when. Hey, Ronan, when will you be back from town? Hell if I know when I'll be back. I'll be home when I'm home. Hell if I know why she said that, but she shouldn't have. I really don't know why she said that, but she shouldn't have. So hell if I know, I don't know. You can use it just by itself or with a noun phrase afterwards. Another one that we're going to look at would be... I have a list in front of me, and I'm just trying to pick out one or two ones that are easy enough to explain and pretty cool as well. And I'm liking to hell with. Yes, to hell with. And you can say to hell with it. Or you can say to hell with him, to hell with her. To hell with that person. To hell with the holiday. We're not going anymore. If you say to hell with plus noun, you are showing displeasure. You are showing disregard towards the named person or thing. To hell with you and your ideas. It basically means I don't want your ideas, and I don't like you right now, go away. To hell with that decision. It's the wrong one. I really dislike that decision. I'm probably going to disregard that decision. So to hell with it, used to show displeasure or disregard towards the named person or the named thing. A beautiful one right there. To hell with it. To hell with them for supplying weapons. Okay, the last one that we're going to look at is one that you can use for a variety of situations. And I love it. We use this phrase for surprises. And it is two simple words. Fucking hell. Fucking hell, what happened now? Imagine you're just sitting at home. And you hear a load of dishes smash in your kitchen. You can say, fucking hell, what did he do now? 
As in if someone was in your kitchen and they broke something. So fucking hell is used for surprise. You might be looking at the newspaper and you see a crazy headline and you're like, fucking hell, look at this man. Look at this headline, it's crazy. Maybe you see a soccer score or a sport score that really surprises you. Fucking hell, that was a crazy score. Fucking hell, did you see the score of the game? Oh my god, it was crazy. Yes, it is a very vulgar phrase to use. We're using the F word. Ooh. But it's cool. So fucking hell, absolutely surprised. You might walk outside. And here's a good one. Fucking hell, it is hot as hell out here. We probably wouldn't use it in connection with another hell expression. But there is an example. You walk outside, fucking hell it's hot. You walk outside in winter, fucking hell it's cold. In the morning, you open your curtains and you see it has snowed a lot overnight. Fucking hell. Fucking hell, it snowed last night. Fucking hell, look at all the snow outside. And you are just letting someone know that you are absolutely surprised by something. Okay, folks, there you go. A couple of phrases with the word hell. The hell I will. For the hell of it. One hell of a hurry. Fucking hell. All hell broke loose. Adjective as hell. To hell with it. And hell if I know. All different expressions with hell. There are many, many more out there. And we'll probably get a couple of different podcast episodes about hell if I wanted. Anyways, folks. I wish you all a good day. My name is Ronan. This is a very quick episode of the Little Seal English Podcast. Please go to buymeacoffee.com slash little seal. You can buy me a coffee. You can buy me a beer. You can just look at it and you can download all the free content I have up there because there's a lot of free shit up there. Please let me know if you have any questions. Message me, Telegram, Instagram, all of those things. And most of all, just stay happy, stay safe, stay warm. It's getting cold, for us anyways. And uh, yeah, I'll chat to you soon. Bye.